it is my great pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Annette Hay, and she is going to give a talk on gratitude in patients and cell therapy. Hi, thank you, Jane, and thank you, everyone. Gratitude, impatience. Do you consider them mutually exclusive? That thankfulness and a willingness to wait are likely characteristics that run together, as may a lack of both. I've been thinking about this. I'm Pollyanna over here, playing the glad game and grateful for everything. The feeling of the sand between my toes on the beach, the wind in my face, the nervous anticipation of talking with you guys today, and the time you've taken to listen. I'm also impatient. This was a recent realization for me. On announcing to my husband and teenage daughters in the kitchen, that patience was not one of my greater virtues. They paused, glanced at me carefully, then kindly said, well, at least you have insight. <laughs> I'm impatient because our time is finite. And this is where joking must be put aside. As a cancer doctor, I see it daily. All of us have been affected by cancer in one way or another. Every moment matters when you have cancer, especially an aggressive, fast-growing one. I'm a clinician scientist. I see patients. I do research. One of the things I'm excited about is a brand new way to give some people with cancer more time more life. Let me tell you about it. Imagine a world where cancer can be cured by a person's own immune system. Instead of chemotherapy, surgery or radiation, allowing a patient's own immune blood cells to do the work. It's not the way the world looks right now, but we're closer than you might think. I'd like to take you on a journey, excite you by the extraordinary progress that's already been made. Open the curtains for you to peer into what the future could look like and challenge you to consider how we collectively can shape that future. I'm talking about CAR T cells. That's right, CAR. <laughs> CAR T cell therapy is short for chimeric antigen receptor T cell therapy. It's a revolutionary way of treating cancer using the body's own immune system. It starts with a person with cancer sitting in a comfortable chair with a small tube in their arm. Over several hours, some of their lymphocyte blood cells are removed and put into a special bag, kind of like this one. This bag is then flown to a large factory. There's one in California, one in New Jersey. There, the cells are engineered to make them recognize the cancer, transforming them from ordinary blood cells to CAR T cells. The newly engineered CAR T cells are multiplied to create millions of cells. They're then flown back to the patient's hospital where they are reinfused back into the body. The time for manufacturing and shipping is around four weeks. That's about a month of anxiety, waiting for the personalized treatment to arrive. 
No two CAR T-cell bags are the same. Every one is unique to an individual patient. CAR T-cell therapy has saved lives, curing some people with certain types of leukemia and lymphoma in whom all other treatments, including bone marrow transplant, didn't work. It's also showing promise in other conditions, like myeloma. New treatments take years to develop. First, research is done in the laboratory. Then, treatments that look promising are tested in people, in clinical trials. Clinical trials are a choice that people are offered. They can choose to participate in the research or not. There are often strict criteria to be able to enroll in a clinical trial. So the participants are safe and the researchers can tell if the treatment is working. You may be surprised to hear that Kingston, yep, little Kingston, is a major hub of cancer clinical trials in Canada and in 40 countries around the world. This internationally recognized expertise is what attracted me to the Canadian Cancer Trials Group at Queen's, coming from Ireland via Scotland. 10 years ago, it is brilliant to be part of the team here. I would like to tell you three stories of patients I have looked after. They show how progress is made with new treatments. I'll warn you, there's sadness, but there's also joy and hope. My motivation for getting into cell therapy began with a lovely person with a horrible cancer. It just wouldn't go away with all the treatments that usually work. This was several years ago when CAR T cell therapy was just emerging. There was a clinical trial of CAR T cell therapy she hoped to participate in Unfortunately, the cancer grew too big, meaning that option was taken away from them. They died, leaving behind a devastated family and a community who relied on them. Now, we don't know if the CAR T cell treatment would have worked for them but the loss of the chance to try was difficult for all to take. This focused me to consider, what can we do to give those who come next a chance? Fast forward two years. The second story ends well, but it was a hair raising ride. Another beautiful person with a cancer that kept coming back and a resourceful husband. He pitched a small tent in her hospital room and camped out there for a month. By this time, CAR T cell therapy was now approved in Canada, but there was very limited capacity to deliver it. They were able to travel to the US to get treatment. As the CAR T cells were being infused, they calculated the cost of the fluid running into her arm. Three hundred and seventy-five thousand US dollars for the little bag. Sixteen thousand Canadian dollars per milliliter. Unfortunately, the treatment didn't work for her as well as we hoped. She went on to have a couple of other treatments and is now in remission, back to work as a teacher in this room looking fabulous. <laughs> Learning points here. 
new cell therapy products are needed because the ones available now don't work for everyone. How can we make it more affordable? Fast forward another six months. It's Christmas. I'm on call. There's a man in his early 20s in hospital, desperately sick. His CAR T cells are being manufactured in the US. We're waiting those terrifying four weeks for his personalized treatment to arrive. Yes, because by this time we could deliver treatment in Canada, which is fantastic. But every day waiting was uncertain. As his cancer raged on, he developed life-threatening blood clots in the lungs and serious infections. Thankfully, he made it and it worked. He's in complete remission now, getting on with life and the things you have fun doing in your 20s. But during that wait, the story could very easily have had a different ending. How can we make it faster? Let's shorten that timeline by doing it here. We can do all of this in Canada. The pandemic highlights challenges with precious products crossing international borders. Point of care or decentralized manufacturing at specialist centers in Canada is possible. It is being tested as an alternative approach in clinical trials right now. We hypothesize that it may provide cell therapy to more people more quickly and more affordably and with broad societal benefit, including to the healthcare system, the economy and the manufacturing sector. While for some, CAR T cell therapy is akin to a miracle. There are major limitations to be addressed. I've outlined the wait time that some don't survive. The cost and the fact that it doesn't work for everyone. Additionally, side effects such as those affecting the brain can be severe. We, along with others, are doing research to address all of these issues. I'm particularly interested in figuring out how to make cell therapy less costly, how to treat more people with the same taxpayers dollars. I want to be really clear about what I am not saying. I am not saying this research should be rushed. It's important to take the time to do it right. When we conduct clinical trials, we do them believing that the new thing we are testing may make things better. A new treatment may let people live longer. A new medicine may have fewer side effects. A new process may be faster and more affordable. These are research questions and by definition, before starting a clinical trial, there must be equipoise, meaning no one knows the answer for sure. As the clinical trial runs, we are looking closely at the data as it comes in. If there's a signal that it's not working, it's important to recognize that quickly, stop and reassess direction. If the new treatment or process is better, it's important to have strong, reliable data that organizations such as Health Canada and the Food and Drug Administration can review and be confident in the results. That's the first step to new proven therapies becoming available to patients. It's important to take the time to do this research properly and safely. I 
am not seeking the holy grail of immortality. All of us will die sometime. I'm amazed by the gratitude and thoughtfulness people can show in their last days. One of the parts of my job that I simultaneously dread and revere is the final conversation. As a hematologist, I get to know the people I care for well, often building a relationship over several years. At some point, there may come a mutual realization that the end is close. The conversation, when we sit down, silence the cell phones, look into each other's eyes and reflect, it's one of the most meaningful. Early in my career, I cared for a firefighter. He had had several different treatments for his cancer, but they'd stopped working. There was a new treatment coming through where the clinical trial results looked really good, but it was not yet widely available. I tried to get it for him from several different sources. I didn't succeed. I tried to hide my disappointment from him. I didn't succeed there either. He saw right through me. He said, thank you for trying. I am grateful for all the advances that have occurred up to now. They've given me a few years of good life I would not otherwise have had. Yeah, there'll be more advances that people will benefit from in future. That's okay. I won't forget the lesson he taught me. He participated in a clinical trial, testing a new possible treatment for his cancer. He contributed to further understanding of his condition for those who would come after him. While it's always nice to cure someone's cancer, I also take pride in setting people up for a good death. Ideally, when the time is right for them. When my time comes, I hope someone will do the same for me. In the meantime, I'll continue to expedite testing and implementation of new promising treatments for those who are not ready to go yet, those who still have a lot to give to society and their families and who desperately seek more time. This research represents a huge team effort. JFK's words from long ago still seem apt. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one we are willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone and one that we intend to win. CAR T cell therapy is in our future. I'm committed to playing the part I can in expediting that future, testing new cell therapy products and new means of manufacturing them. It is only through making cell therapy more affordable that access to existing products will be expanded beyond the lucky few, and that new cell therapy advances will be enabled in cancer and in other conditions, such as autoimmune disease and infection. There are many paradoxes in this world. Gratitude and impatience coexist beautifully and effectively. 
I am immensely thankful for the decades of work that has gone into making cell therapy a reality. I remain unapologetically impatient to realize more progress. None of us know when our time will run out. Thank you.